Here's a quick guide to Huravac's Slosh Explorer. It's a tool in the program that lets you interact with gridded, high-resolution map layers for storm surge inundation scenarios. The Slosh Explorer is mainly for long-range planning because it doesn't contain any information specific to one particular storm, but it does give you an idea of your worst-case scenario for a given category or a certain set of conditions. There are two types of Slosh products in Huravac, MOMS and MEOWS, and to fully explore those acronyms and what they mean, I encourage you to check out the Huravac User Guide, as well as Day 4 of our annual webinar series. The first 30 minutes contains an expert breakdown of how those products are made by the National Hurricane Center Storm Surge Unit and what they mean. In this video, we'll show you how to access and interact with that information inside the program. To open the Slosh Explorer, We'll go to the toolbox in the lower left corner of the Hervac workspace, click on Storm Surge, and the Slosh Explorer opens in a panel from the right-hand side of the program. To make more room for the map, I'll collapse the left side panel. There are two radio buttons in the Slosh Explorer. We'll start with the first, which is for MOMS, or Maximum of Meows. It's a national-level hazard map that's a composite of all areas and all scenarios for a particular category of storm. So there's only one selection you can make. We'll have to choose a category, one, two, three, four, five, or tropical storm. Now we don't have data for tropical storm or category five threshold for all areas. So here we'll demonstrate category four. When that selection is made, it changes the box to green and now I can click display on map. It zooms out to remind us that this is a national level hazard map and that no particular storm is going to cause all of this inundation. To really interpret this data, we have to zoom way into the local level. I'll use my magnifying glass tool and zoom into the Charleston area of South Carolina. A helpful tip you might consider is to change to a different base map. We'll make our selection from this menu and I'll show this information with a light gray canvas so that the only colors that we see are for the data itself. Another adjustment we can make is to go to the Quick Layers options in the left toolbar, and I can adjust the opacity with this slider, and if I'd like to see what my base map is showing me, like the roads or buildings beneath that data, this is how I can make those slight adjustments to just make things easier to make out. So the legend at the bottom shows me intervals of one feet for that inundation height above ground level. It maxes out at 10 feet on the color scale, but there are areas where the data can be up to 21 feet. So zooming in further, I can actually show you how instead of just relying on the legend, we can actually query this using a right-click tool. So I'll right-click at this intersection and click Place Surge Flag, and then click Place Surge Flag in the menu, and now I have an exact value labeled on top of this map. That's 15 feet of inundation above ground level at that point. And to show you another example of how it works, I'll right click again at this other part of town and click place search flag. And now I have some different data. So let me show you what happens when I want to update and show a different category of mom. Let me drop this down to category two in our interface over on the right. And now I can click the update button and my colors on the map change and my search flags change as well. Now I have seven feet at that first point and the initial point is dry. But keep in mind when we're looking at surge flags, that's dry from the standpoint of storm surge inundation, not necessarily from freshwater or river flooding. This is very high resolution data and we can zoom in further, but this is best interpreted on a community level. And keep in mind that when we're looking at a mom, seven feet might be the worst case for any category two at that first surge flag that we placed, but we don't know which size of storm, where it makes landfall, which trajectory it's on, or how fast it's moving. Those are all critical factors that change storm surge. So that's where we can start to narrow things down a little bit more by looking at the meows, and that's an acronym standing for maximum envelope of water. So first I'll remove this mom data from the map, and now I'll click the radio button for blended or single meows. These are basin specific. So a quick word, a slosh basin is a region along the coast that's delineated for storm surge modeling. They tend to be pretty broad and can cover an entire or maybe multiple states. So it's still not showing us data for one particular storm. It's still combining a lot of different hypothetical storms, but we can be a little more specific about category forward speed and direction of movement. Now I've already set my base location in Charleston, so Huravac knows that I probably want to look at the Charleston Basin. But I can select from any of these options here to explore slosh data that's localized for areas along the East Coast, Gulf Coast, Caribbean, or Pacific. 
Now I have three more things to choose before I can display this slosh data on the map. I have to choose category, just like I did with the moms, but I also have to choose direction and speed. So let's step through it. Let's say we want to perhaps make an exercise dealing with a category four hurricane in the Charleston area. So I've made that selection first. Now moving into the direction, these are all the directions that the NHC storm surge unit has performed modeling. So that's anywhere from a storm moving to the due west, to northwest, to moving due north, to moving northeast. Parallel implies a storm that's close enough to create storm surge, but does not actually make landfall. Now the thing about direction is you can choose one or you can choose multiple, and the Slosh Explorer will blend those different layers to give you different output. In this example, let's blend Slosh data for hurricanes moving only to the northwest or toward the north-northwest. And we also have the option to choose a forward speed, and these are predefined in miles per hour. There's a slow moving five mile per hour option, or a fast moving 35 mile per hour option. And these categories and directions and speeds vary depending on which slosh basin you're working with. But let's say our exercise involves a hurricane with a forward speed of roughly 15 miles per hour. Now I can click display on map. The Hurivac map zooms out to remind us that this is a basin wide composite, that no individual storm is going to create all of that inundation that's mapped here because it's still blending together many different hurricanes along many different landfall points from Georgia all the way up to North Carolina. So this is more specific than a mom, but it's still much more general than what we would see in the real world. So we're still planning for a worst case scenario, but the worst case when we're talking about a category four moving either to the northwest or north northwest at 15 miles per hour. So I can either zoom back in or use my left pointing go to previous map extent arrow to go back to the Charleston area. And I'll zoom in just a little bit further to show you how these surge flags that we placed for the moms are still there, but they've now updated with these values for this meow that we created. 14 feet at the first flag, five feet at the second flag. And just like the moms, we can also make new selections over here in the panel. Let's say we wanted to model a category five and also incorporate a north moving direction and click update. And the values on the map will update and the surge flags will update as well. And if you're tasked with doing a lot of analysis and planning for a certain number of places, you might want to save those surge flags as points of interest so you can retrieve them and reload them into your slosh maps every time you open Hurivac instead of having to place them one by one. And to do so, we'll right click, click place surge flags, and from the submenu, click Save Surge Flags as POIs. So now it's stored in my user profile and I can retrieve these flags tomorrow a little bit faster than how I made them today. And for more information about the Slosh Explorer and just what the Slosh products mean and how they're generated, we encourage you to watch day four of our annual webinar series. That recording is right here on YouTube. Or you can click the question mark in the upper right corner of the panel and that takes you to the Huravac user guide page all about the Slosh Explorer.